Well, it's not unusual to hear your heart for Africa, Cheryl. Uh, long before this trip, which was September, mm -hmm. tell us some of your personal reflections. Yeah, you know what? It's uh, it's actually with all the missions work I've done, it's really the first time that I have been face to face with people who are starving. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen people who are poor, uh, who suffer in various ways. Um, definitely in India, I saw many people who are poor, but this just seemed to be a whole other level of um, ema you know emaciated bodies, uh, lack of food. I met a woman uh, who hadn't since May, and I was there in September. She hadn't eaten anything but wild fruits. So wild fruits are they're, they're like um, little coconuts that you kind of crack, crack on rocks and then you not, just gnaw on them like this kind of hard, I don't even know what that is, but that's all she'd eaten since May. Since and May. Since May. And you know, uh, it's funny because whenever I travel uh, in the mission field, I, I really come prepared because many times there's you, eight hours can go by and there's no safe place for us to eat. So I bring little protein bars or almonds and you know, I ended up giving every single one of those away. I, I could, I mean, how could I eat? You know, I was just trying, and people, they didn't know what to do with my little almonds. <laughs> but uh, when we showed them that they weren't to play with it, they could actually eat them, they they got it, you know, but it just- and that would um, be nutritional. I wonder about that hard coconut thing, if that would- Well, I, that's what I wonder, like how sustain. long can you actually, well, obviously if people are dying, even in the drought, you can't sustain forever on that and the lack of water as well. And then of course the water is bad for you and it's unclean and so you get diseases. There's just so many different ways that, that you can die. But I, I think it, for me, it was very personally impacting knowing the riches we have here. And there's this one moment where Jenica, who is our Turkana host, and we'll be learning, we're, there are partners on the ground, Jenica and Benson, Akana, and um, we'll learn about them more tomorrow. She said to me, oh, I would love to come to Canada someday. You know, it seems like you can have food whenever you want. Mm. And that for that me- That concept to them. I thought, you know, no matter how world poor world. you are here in Canada, there's a food bank somewhere that can get you something, <laughs> you know? And there's never been a time in my life where I haven't been able to have some sort of food, you know, somewhere. And so that for me was just one of those moments that makes you pause and makes you realize it's a whole different world. We're going to be seeing these people and, and precious leaders working amongst them. Uh, but if, if you got this month's compass, uh, you know, what strikes you right away is despite all the need, look at the color, look at the, the vibrancy of uh, their dress, and, and, and even the brightness of their countenance. These are beautiful people. They are, and they're, they're lovely in spirit. You know, I just found them so welcoming. And for me, it was really amazing because when you see uh, African people starving on television, basically you, you see them living in a hut, a different world than you, and then the reporter says, she says she's hungry or something like that, and that's it. You know, so for me to actually spend time, I interviewed so many of them and they were so amazed. They said, most people come here, they just take pictures and leave. Mm. And so to actually just sit down with them and hear their hearts and talk to them. And, and, and it just amazed me to hear some of their thoughts. For example, I asked them about what is the difference between a feeding program and what we're planning to do for you. And they immediately said, oh yeah, like uh, when you have to beg people for food, it's humiliating. And it's not the way God created us. God created us to work with our hands and to care for ourselves and to feed our families. And we want dignity and self-sufficiency. And we don't want to be on TV anymore as the starving, dying people. We want to be off television and go help other people who are starving. We want to make enough food now with this program to send it to other people around the world who need food the way that we've been helped. And just, like, I just was so, um, I felt like it broke down a really big barrier just to be able to talk to them and understand their thoughts, you know, as they were struggling with this problem. I'm trying to think of the word I think Dave used for people who study water. What was that, Dave? Hydro? Hydrologists. Hydrologists. Now this, the, this whole concept of solar powered, sustainable water in the desert, streams in the desert, mm -hmm. uh, this, we need a lot more of this. I don't know how new it is, but I'm thankful, number one, that we can capitalize on it for these people in Turkana, and surely we need to multiply it. I think it's the, it's really, it, Hope for the it ties back into the whole ideology of Crossroads Missions as I work with them. You know, they don't want to um, start a program where, where they're just causing people to be dependent for a lifetime. They get the difference between, uh, you know, emergency relief and then giving people dignity and self-sufficiency. We mm -hmm. all want to be independent. And so, you know, I, I just think it's incredibly exciting and, uh, and especially for the people that I met because I, their faces, 
their stories are ever before me. And one of the women I met, and she's actually someone who impacted me in another way because this, and we're going to hear the story in just a minute of a woman who lost her granddaughter. And she walked me to the grave. And I'm standing with her, and I don't know how to express my sympathy because there's the language barrier. We don't understand each other. And so I, I put my hand on her shoulder like this, and I was completely shocked. I've never felt a shoulder like that in my life. There was not, nothing there. It was like touching a skeleton, and it literally broke my heart. And so let's take a look at the story of this beautiful grandma. In a land ravished by drought and hunger, it's the most vulnerable who are at risk, children and the elderly. For a grandmother like Arakudi, the burden is especially heavy. As an elderly widow taking care of her grandchildren, she is their only source of food. She says uh, the main problem that they face is lack of food, but they also get sicknesses like malaria. And sometimes when she's not able to be strong enough to go to the wild and pick some wild fruit, her children sleep hungry because they don't, they don't have any regular source of food. It's a terrible burden for someone whose body is not as strong as it used to be. And she says she daily feels the limitations of her age. Because she's old, she's not able to connect to, with anybody, even with his relatives to get something, or even with friends. So for her, it's like she's just, she's disabled. She can't move because of her age. And so she's not able to take care of her grandchildren. When the worst drought in 60 years hit the Turkana region in 2011, her family was one of the first to feel it. Even as organizations such as Crossroads Missions were mobilizing a feeding program, her two-year-old grandchild began to fail. She says they were hungry, they didn't have any food that time. That's the time we were responding with an emergency program. So she says if we didn't respond at that time, more people would have died. So that's the time she lost that grandchild due to lack of food. The memory of that lost child haunts her as she continues the fight to keep her family alive. The grave is nearby, a constant reminder of the peril she faces. In the meantime, she survives, as many here do, on a tiny income from whatever she can utilize in her surroundings. She says they make mats, makuti, the palm leaves tied together for thatching. It's made up like some material for thatching the houses, plus brooms, plus going to sell firewood in town. That's our coping strategy. But despite these incredible hardships, she says her faith hasn't in any way been shaken. She says these problems do not in any way affect her faith because she believes that the God who made her, he would never leave her alone. And hope is on the horizon as she will be a recipient of the Turkana Eden Agricultural Ministry, an initiative that will drought-proof her family and provide food security for generations to come. She says she'll be grateful to God and her life will change. So she's very optimistic about the idea of agriculture and water being availed to their farms. Stories like these are difficult to hear for those fighting to make a difference. International Field Representative Chester Van Heusen says the only way to cope with the hunger and desperation around him is to keep the dream of a better future alive. You know, the deaths that are so needlessly happening around here, and you know, I myself am a father and I, I lost a little child, uh, but it was, a, it, was, it was a disease, it was something that was actually, we had no control over. But you know, death due to hunger and starvation is preventable. And there's no reason why we should stand back, even in our, our own society with the abundance that we have, and watch people die due to lack of food and nutrition. So we're appealing to you today, you know, our Crossroads viewers and everybody and anybody that's watching this today, would you be a part of this? Would you be a part of the solution so that we can prevent this kind of thing from happening over and over? Thank you for whatever you can do to be a part of this solution and this uh, effort to help the Turkana people. To help bring a legacy of food security for generations to come for the Turkana people, please call one 288 3 or go to crossroads.ca slash missions. You know, it's Cyber Monday. 
uh, one and a quarter billion dollars is expected to be spent online today with Christmas shopping. Black Friday was over a billion dollars. We're just setting new records for Christmas spending. And I'm not here to be a bah humbug today. Uh, my husband made 10 pounds of Christmas cake mm. on the weekend. Uh, we're, we're anticipating the, the food and the fun, the time with family and the gifts. And I think it's important that we consider what we've been hearing today. A thousand dollars to rescue a family for the rest of their lives. That's, that's sobering. And that is a rich opportunity. Let's break it down. There's a thousand dollars that help one family to be sustainable for a long time. Uh, 150 dollars uh, for 1,000 liter uh, water tank hoses for the garden plots that are being developed. And then the fifty dollars will help with seeds and tools for one family. And so those are kind of some amounts you can hang your hat on and say, I, I can do this and I can do this. And I think, you know, uh, I was writing a blog actually for our Facebook page and our Crossroads website on the weekend about this. And, you know, when the, when the Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself, I really think there's sacrifice involved in that, you know, because what would you do for yourself? Well, you do a lot more for yourself than for anyone else, you know, except for maybe your own children or your husband or wife, as it may be. And, and I just think, you know, yeah, when you see that kind of need, we can make a difference. And I think the reason we don't make a difference is because we feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. by all the need. But you know, I was there on the ground and I've experienced it with the Crossroads viewers before, is that when we all come together, we all do what we can. It literally changes the face of the world. And I really believe we can change the face of these Turkana. And many of them are brothers and sisters in Christ, Cheryl. You had good fellowship with oh, them. Oh yeah, their faith is so strong. And despite seeing very little success, they still cling to their faith in God, which is more than so many of us do when hardship comes. So they really inspired me in a beautiful way. So at this time of year, as, uh, as we're all, just trying to think of, of something we could do out of the box to help someone else and, and as Moira, as you said, not to just be looking inward, but looking outward. This is a fantastic way that you can help someone, not only for a temporary helping to feed them, but for a sustainable, ongoing help. And so uh, we so appreciate your support and you can do what you can. And uh, there will be uh, more information coming up in just a moment. Oh, and the rest of the week. And so thanks once again. And so take a look at this. Here's how you can help respond today. Thanks to the faithful support of our partners, last year Crossroads was able to assist with emergency feeding programs to fight the extreme drought throughout the Horn of Africa, including the northern regions of Kenya in a desert area known as Turkana. Now we want to move forward from providing temporary emergency relief to life-changing long-term permanent solutions. Our goal is to provide continuous and freely accessible water by digging large volume solar powered wells enabling families to grow food on one quarter acre garden plots. Through Crossroads provision of seeds, tools and agricultural training, families will be able to grow their own food year round. The cyclical and relentless seasons of drought in this region has caused extreme poverty and starvation for the Turkana people. We at Crossroads believe this can change. After extensive research and site visits, we developed a plan to help transform the landscape of this parched land and its people from failure and hunger to permanent food security. This would be a miracle that the Turkana people have not seen in their lifetime. Together with your support, we can provide life-giving water that will spring forth out of the ground and the living waters that will well up for eternal life. Please help us bring streams to the desert. Visit crossroads.ca, call 1-888-288-0003 or make checks payable to Crossroads Missions.